welcome back to our channel and welcome to Joy's University. Today, I will be discussing Article 6 of the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers and it is titled, The Teacher and the Higher Authorities in the Philippines. Let me present you the Section 1 of this particular article and it says, Every teacher shall make it his duty to make an honest effort to understand and support the legitimate policies of the school and the administration regardless of personal feeling or private opinion and shall faithfully carry them out. This particular article will tell us that teachers should make sure that they apply or that they follow the legitimate policies of the school and of the administration. When do we say that these policies are legitimate? If these policies are clearly stipulated or presented in the different manuals like administrative, um, teacher's manual, and student's manual, and if these policies are well discussed too and are well understood by everyone involved. So it is so unprofessional for a teacher to campaign against a certain policy of a school with which he or she disagrees. If the teacher sees irregularity, inconsistency, or inapplicability of a certain policy, then the teacher has to report it to the appropriate body. And the job, but one thing for certain, the job of the administrator and of the teacher is to make sure that all policies are strictly followed, strictly implemented to avoid inconsistencies and chaos. That is why my advice to you when you become teachers is that you have to be very much aware of the different policies that concern you and that of your students so that you will be guided, guided as to what is to be done and how to deal with everyone in the school community. Like what I said, if there are privileges, if there are rights stipulated in the manuals but are not given, not implemented in the school, then professionally discuss it to the right authority. Okay, we have to be very much aware of our policies because our ignorance to school policies would never excuse us from anything. Okay, section 2. A teacher shall not make any false accusations or charges against superiors under anonymity. However, if there are valid charges, he should present such under oath to competent authority. Okay, let me just look into the words false accusations or charges against superior. Teachers should never, we should not come up with false accusations with hearsays. We should not fabricate stories against our superiors. Okay, that is so unethical. But if your accusation or if your charges are coupled with irrefutable proofs, or your claims can be supported by a lot of evidence, then you can express or you can share this accusation to the higher authority or to the com competent authority. But when you do it, you do it in black and white and at the same time, you write your name as a complainant. That if, if your name is there, that means that your complaint is credible. And so, like what I said, all right, if there are things done by our image superior which are unprofessional and which are unethical, and we have proofs that would support our claim, then you have to come up into the open and, you know, tell our, our accusations to the competent authority. Because, you know, we have to really fight for what we think is right. If this image superior does something and is not being reprimanded, is not being, uh, being stopped from doing such, then nothing happens in our school. Our integrity as school community will just be dampened. Okay, next, section 3. A teacher shall transact all official business through channels except when special conditions warrant and different procedures, such as when special 
uh, conditions are advocated by uh, but but are opposed by the immediate superiors in which case the teacher shall appeal directly to the appropriate higher authorities all right we always have to be aware of the SOPs, the standard operating procedures. We have to transact official business through channels. We have to know protocols. Before we proceed to the president, we have to discuss things among ourselves first and to the program coordinator and to the dean, to the VP and to the president. That is really the, the protocol, the channel. But we can immediately proceed and discuss issues to the with, with the higher ups if okay may i present you three reasons first when the changes we would want to advocate are opposed by our immediate superior okay because you know faculty also has the right to advocate possible changes and the right to suggest uh, better plans for the school and for the students and if these are directly opposed by the immediate superior and we think that these changes are needed in the school then we can go immediately to the higher ups second if the concerns and issues are not properly addressed by our immediate superior then we can go immediately to the higher ups and the third one if the changes that are to be implemented in the school are not properly explained okay and we that lead us to misunderstanding as well as uh, not looking into the whys of a certain policy to be changed or to be implemented then we can go immediately to the higher ups but pag wala sa tatlong eto okay then we have to always follow protocols and we have to transact businesses through channels okay next Every teacher, individually or as a part of the group, has the right to seek redress against the injustice to the administration to the extent possible shall raise grievances with an acceptable democratic process. And in doing so, they shall avoid jeopardizing the interest and the welfare of the learners whose right to learn must be respected. You know, Teachers have this right to stand against discrimination and injustice that are happening in the school. Teachers have the right to raise complaints against, uh, against injustices, against um, uh, and professionalism to our administrators. And if there are some rights that are not given to teachers or if there are some policies that are not implemented or if there are some policies that adversely affect the teachers and the students alike then the teachers have their have the right to stand against those but always remember that when you do this that when you stand against discrimination and against injustices you have to do it in a manner that does not jeopardize or threaten the welfare of the students the welfare of the students is always our priority and we should avoid everything that threaten that welfare that we are protecting. Now, is it okay to go on a strike? Is it okay to participate in a rallies? Yes, those are not unprofessional to be done. It's okay to go on a strike. It's okay to participate in a, uh, in a rally. But, always remember that when you do that, you do not harm your students, you do not um, jeopardize, like what I said, or risk the welfare of the students who are, whose right to learn is very much protected. Okay? You always have to do it in a professional manner. Section 5. Every teacher has the right to invoke the principle that appointments, promotions, and transfer of teachers are made only on the basis of the merit and needed in the interests of the service. You know, appointments, says there, and promotions, these are all based on the merits and needs. 
a teacher is appointed to a certain position or is promoted to a certain position uh, because of his or her ability and because of his or her worth. Now, may I present to you sad realities about promotion and appointments that are happening nowadays. Una, there are some teachers who are promoted not because of what they know, not because of what they can offer to the school, but because of whom they know. Okay, you are promoted immediately as a master teacher, or as a principal, or as a permanent teacher, not because of what you know, but because of whom you know. Ang superintendent ay uncle mo, ang principal ay auntie mo, and the like. That's why even if these teachers participate in the ranking, okay, the real essence of ranking is not really what is done in the different schools nowadays, whether you accept it or not. Second, you know, others are promoted not because of what they know or not because of their intellectual capacity, but because of their titles. Because their titles, because of the titles that they have in their names, the longer the title, the better. That is why we cannot blame other teachers who would opt to just pay just for them to get their master's degree or doctorate degree. We cannot blame other teachers who would just attend a school that does not oblige uh, students or master's students or doctorate students to attend classes in a school, but they are just have to pay, but they just have to pay. Because ang kalakaran po ngayon sa mga schools natin is that they would not see how well you are in a school as a masteral or a doctorate student, but they would only take a look at your title. If you are a doctor or a master's degree holder, regardless of your intellectual capacity, you will immediately be promoted. Ang labanan ngayon ay padamihan ng titulo. Kung wala kang titulo, even if you are very much qualified, more more than the rest but because you are not a master's degree holder or a doctorate degree holder what you know will be put into the into the trash bin okay kaya nga ngayon um ang dami dami ginagawa ng mga teachers para lang ma-promote sila uh, yung iba nag-aattend sila ng seminars kasi the more certificates that you have the more chances of being promoted Diba? nag attend sila ng mga webinars pero ang nakakalungkot dito is that they really do not take webinars that seriously. Naka-on lang yung cellphones nila. Kung maraming webinars, maraming gadgets ang naka-on. And then if they are given certificates, they would be very much proud to post the certificates online. But if you would ask them about what it is that they have learned, they can tell you anything. Why? Because their purpose is not to learn. They study, they attend webinars, not for them to learn, not for them to be better, but for them to be promoted and for them to gain a lot of certificates that they could ever gain. That's the sad reality. And the third reason others are promoted because there is no other choice. There is no other choice and there is a need to fill in a certain position at ikaw lang yung nandun. So kahit na hindi ka qualified, ikaw na ang uupo whether you like it or not. But you know, dear teachers, when you become full-fledged, uh, uh, dear students rather, when you become full-fledged teachers and if you would be promoted later on to a certain position and you think that you are not intellectually equipped, then start making yourself worthy of that position. Do not let others do the task that you are expected to do. Mas pangit naman yung inappoint ka sa position mo, tinanggap mo naman siya kahit alam mong hindi mo kaya, tapos nandun ka na nga sa position mo, hindi ka pa gagawa ng paraan para gumaling naman. When you are in the position, equip yourself with the necessities, with the necessities of the position. And six. A teacher who accepts a position assumes a contra contractual obligation to live as to his contract, assuming full knowledge of employment terms 
end conditions. So once a teacher accepts a position, then he or she has to study the job description. She or he has to understand well the job that he or she has to accomplish as well as the limitation of his or her job. And before accepting the position, examine yourself. Ask yourself, am I capable of handling such position? And if you think that you are not capable, be humble enough, be brave enough to decline the position. Okay? But if you do not have any other choice but to accept it, then it is your responsibility to equip yourselves, yourself rather, with the necessities of the profession or of the position. Okay? Equip yourself. If you think that you are not capable to study, if you think that you cannot do it, then learn from it as you go on. Do not ask other people to do the job that you have to do. Okay? So, these are all the professions under Article 6 of the Code of Ethics. And this tells us about our relationship with the higher authorities in the profession. And this would be all. See you next time.